Okay, so uh, in, from the video I posted yesterday, I got a lot of requests to go ahead and make a video, a technique video, um, talking about how to uh, bring in um, what well, we'll see in the video. So basically what this is going to do is, uh, this is just a quick video. Um, this whole workflow could be refined further for sure. Um, and uh, it does rely on a few things. It relies on you having access to some STL files for whatever multi-unit abutment analogs you use. Uh, and some other things. So there are some softwares that already have this ability. Uh, I've now learned since posting that video, the ExoCAD and 3Shape have it if you use the right um, scannable analogs. Uh, didn't know those, those were available. I guess uh, uh, Preet has a system of these. I don't know if any other uh, systems do. Um, this is also going to be added directly into Blue Sky Plan. So you won't need to use Mesh Mixer, but um, you can, but uh, Anyway, this is the workflow, so um, uh, hopefully this is helpful to those of you that are uh, interested in tinkering as well. So here is the, uh, the patient's uh, hybrid. Now this is a quick pickup. It's not perfect, but for the, case, for the um, purpose of this video, hopefully it's sufficient. Um, it is sufficient. So anyway, this is a, was a hybrid that was, you can see these uh, housings, the uh, multi unit housings that were picked up in the denture with acrylic. And so now I've taken it in my hand with my intraoral scanner and just scanned the entire thing to make this 3D object. Uh, you could do this with a desktop scanner. That'll be probably even easier, but um, accuracy wise, I'm pretty confident in scanning a physical object outside the mouth that can be dried off and controlled environment. And it's one solid shell. So it's, it's pretty, you can trust it. Um, but, and most people don't have desktop scanners in their offices, but if not, a uh, desktop scanner is certainly a, an, an option for you. Well, now after I've scanned this, I went ahead and I'm using the CareStream CS3600 for this scan, but a lot of softwares, a lot of cameras have the same purposes. Now I'm going to add scan flags, uh, scan bodies into these, and they're actually just going to be the actual analogs that um, I, you would use in, in a model for you know an analog uh, model. So I put those in and I basically crop out those areas, tell the software I want to scan these, scan them. They're not perfect, but you can see that it's, the important part is getting a nice flat top and getting it as, you know, as much as you can get. Um, it is nice um, if you can strategically remove them to keep, and keep scanning so that, and like lock that area, it just helps to scan. Um, I would, you know, spend the extra five or 10 minutes doing that and you're gonna get much smoother scans. I could have done an even better job um, I basically scanned one, and then I scanned two, I scanned two, and I scanned one. Um, so uh, anyway, so that, that's that. Um, these are just the, um, the uh, analog, um, the analogs used uh, from Blue Sky Bio, and um, uh, they currently, uh, they've just, uh, will be selling soon the truly scannable ones in the sense that they're, um, they are sandblasted from the manufacturer. Mine, I had to sandblast myself or have, uh, one of my assistants sandblast them. It works. Um, but, uh, it'll be nice to have them come straight from the company that way. I also did use some powder just to lightly, I mean, not even, you couldn't even see the powder, but just a little dust of it just to reduce the reflectiveness a, a, a touch more. Um, and, uh, yeah, I used OptiSpray. So, okay. So now you know how I've got, how I've obtained these two scans, these two STLs. Now the thing is, is we, um, all are going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to bring in STLs to match these. So just a heads up, this last file here is basically that same hybrid is above, but I've removed this. Let's, we're going to hold on to this for now. I'm going to show you how I might use this, but what it is, this is like, imagine you designed a denture. We'll say in the, de the blue sky plan denture module or exocad or wherever you scan it. And so we're going to hold on to this for later, but I just want to show you what that is. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and bring in some, uh, uh analog STLs. Okay, so there's one, and I'm gonna go ahead and just make my life easier, hit T to transform, slide this forward, and rotate it up 90 degrees. This doesn't make me perfect, I'm just giving myself a little bit, making the rest of the process a little bit easier by getting it so it's a little more visible. Okay, I'm gonna accept that, and before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and click duplicate, 
until I have six of them so that I, I have those ready for when I proceed because I know there's six total uh, things I need to line up. So now I'm just selected on this one. Now to align this, I'm gonna come over here to edit, align, and don't ignore the, the guy over here. I'm looking at the invisible one where it originally was. I'm gonna draw a circle Oh, sorry, I need to come right here to source. I wanna make sure it says surface scribble, destination surface scribble, translate and rotate, okay? So now if I draw a circle, make it pretty broad, and now I'm gonna hold the shift button and draw a circle on the area that I want it to align to. Now it came in upside down, no big deal. You can either press the, the checkbox here or the fat blue arrow right there and it flips over. Now here's where it's not perfectly precise, is that it just lines up flat to flat. You still have to align it here. Now it doesn't take a lot of work, and we're getting really close. We're not getting perfect. That's why the, you know XQCAD 3Shape and Blue Plan, having the ability to not only align this flat, but align out here will be even better, uh, and better you know, pre-sandblasted uh, surfaces. But, so that is really all there is to it. So I'm gonna quickly go through this. Align. Flip it. Center it. Looks good. Accept. And I'm going to pause the video. And I'm going to. I finished all of them with this last one. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you that. But I, I knew as soon as I did it that there should be a keyboard shortcut. I just don't use the align function that often. But if you just click on it and then click the N button on your keyboard, it automatically pulls it up. So you don't have to go over to edit, align, and whatnot. All right. So one thing to keep in mind is the rotation is not lined up. That might seem weird if you're not if you don't think about it. The fact that these are multi-unit abutments, so technically the timing, the rotation is irrelevant. We don't we're not worried about that. So one last thing is I, I mentioned that um, um, you don't uh, these aren't perfect alignment. They aren't. Um, they're pretty darn close, uh, but they're not going to be. I wouldn't trust this quite yet for a millable situation. Um, or even printing. This is going to be really close, but it's going to require some um, uh, some wiggle room to get this perfectly lined up. Um, hopefully with the software being able to align the, the body of it as well as the flat and whatnot, that'll make it even better. But for now, this is what we've got. So where is this actually useful? What I didn't show is that we could also bring in, ideally, something like this. And this abutment is what's called a cal technique setup. And what it has is it has this outer sleeve and it's got, sorry, let me move this. It's got an inner sleeve, which is a spacer basically. And then I don't want that whole thing. Okay, I do. Why? Let's separate that. And so now you can see that we're back to the same ones that I already used. So this, if you think about the spacer that was in there, that piece, if we hide that, this is the amount of space that is built in. So if you were to subtract the spacer itself, from your denture, you're now going to have the right amount of space for a passive pickup within this um, temporary denture, or it could even be permanent if you're if you if you take it that approach, but um, allows you to use the cal technique, and that's a whole other thing. Maybe I'll make a follow up video on that. I don't want to spend too much time make this video too long, but now you see how you can go about um, aligning everything. So let's go ahead and um, 
so we've got this hold the shift button to select multiple things it's not control like we're used to and now I'm gonna click combine takes a second it's a lot to process hold the the S button to um, double click double click double click you get the point hit Y to separate those to make a separate object you'll see it pop up in a second there we go so these are the MUA housings. Let's hide that. Let's hide this bottom thing down here as well. And so now we've got this, which is all the actual MUAs. MUA analogs. And you can see that they now stick right out of the denture. Okay. So the last thing you might consider doing is taking this duplicating it and now I'm gonna play with this a little bit to make myself a model to do that pretty quick we don't have to do anything perfect here but if I hold the shift and click the S button for shift or for select and just select everything sort of just past the ridge I like to press B to smooth up these jagged edges hit OK or enter delete do the same thing over here okay B to smooth it up And then the lingual should possibly be able to get in one fell swoop. Okay, B to smooth it. Delete it. If there's any pieces remaining, that's fine. I'm just going to double click this I want this click the I to invert the selection now everything else is highlighted because if there's multiple pieces that just makes it easier or faster so now we've got one um, basically this is the underside of the denture if I take this and now say control a or select all basically go to edit oh, sorry control a edit and flip normals I now have a model that looks like it does should in the mouth okay to make it easier to see what I'm talking about I'm gonna go ahead and make a you know pour this up by hitting I control a again to select everything D to extrude it just follow along with me if you're not familiar I'm gonna say 14 millimeters I wanna go in the Y direction I want a flat end type. Hit accept. Very important step here. After it processes, you'll see this is pink. Hit control A again so it's all highlighted. Edit, flip normals. So now you have your model. You have a model that you could print um, if you wanted, or you could now take your denture that I have created that blank I mentioned before. Let's set it sort of invisible, and you can see how those pieces protrude through it. So if I wanted, I could um, take those cal cylinders right through this, lined up the way I've aligned everything. Um, here's those housings. It's essentially how they're going to pop through this denture and whatnot. So you can see this has lots of you know uh, functionality from here, but the point is you can now... Um, you could you know print this right here make your denture on top of it make sure it's going to fit on top of that or you could just print um, your model that looks like this you'd have to go through and cut out the areas of the model that superimpose these analogs but that's pretty simple by just selecting and using the erase and fill um, so to delete those areas I'm going to come in here um, 
actually we recorded this previously and I did it so quickly it was pretty sloppy so I'm going to redo this make this area slightly bigger and you don't even need to have these visible you're just trying to delete what looks like the, the MUA sticking out okay and um, do the same thing on all of these oh oops my problem is I have this crease angle still too high because that was from a different video I just made um, showing the cal technique and uh, that'll follow this video but anyway after making that I realized I wanted to clean this up a little bit so I'm just kind of coming over all of these don't want to be too aggressive but you don't have to be perfect here come in here and just get this little area down here. I'm probably being overly picky, but that's how I roll. Okay, so I'm going to press the B button to smooth all those, to smooth the, the borders that are selected. And now I'm just going to quickly press D, or uh, D for extrude. And I'm going to say, let's go six millimeters. Y direction, flat offset. Okay, you can see what that does, just sort of hollows those out. Um, in fact, I think that 0. Point, uh, sorry, 0, we'll just say 1 millimeter. Let's, yeah, that's more than enough. Yeah, let's go a little more than that. Because you want to make sure you're going deep enough. Um, yeah, we don't want to do normals. Okay. You just want to make sure that this is deep enough below where it was everywhere else. You can find out by turning on your analogs and seeing and so now it's done so these are sticking out so now you have a model that you could quite literally work from you could export this model with these sticking in it and you could build a more of a traditional uh, from on top of that um, for me my the purpose of this for me was that I could send this to my lab and he could align it with the um, with the design he's made to see if it looks like it's lined up because we had some you know issues with scan accuracy with a different case and I just wanted to confirm so this is why I made this but again in the second video you can I can show you the Cal technique which actually gives you the ability to completely design a printable prosthetic for a purely or mill uh, for a purely passive um, pickup uh, using the Cal technique so anyway thanks a lot that is the end of this video